Ayawaye, wayawaye. The story of Ayawaye and my cat, Gwydion. At least a year and a half before I had to euthanize Gwydion, my cat of 17 years, he started giving me signs that it was time for him to leave the earth plane. He got sick, he, he lost a lot of weight, and started peeing and pooping in unacceptable places, something he had never done before. Still, I loved that cat. I somehow thought he'd stay with me much longer than he did. He'd been with me since I left my parental home in Michigan in 2002. We stayed a while in Georgia on a farm, and in late 2003, we came to Durham. He was a mama's boy. He loved his mother and was content to have all my love and attention. It turned out on several occasions he'd settle for nothing less. When we first came to Durham, Gwydion got in a fight. The other cat scratched him on his right ear. The ear got infected, blew up, and became tightly swollen with pus. The vet drained the pus with a clamp. The clamp left his ear permanently crimped. The crimped ear became his trademark. In the folds of this crimp, wax and exfoliated skin would accumulate the which I'd have to clean out every now and then. In the beginning, it was easy to do with a Q-tip, but as he got older, I'd have to squirt oil, usually olive oil and later on a medicinal oil with mullein and garlic to loosen the clog. While he was young, it was a fight to get that oil in his ear, but as he aged, he submitted more easily, probably knowing that it had to be done. I do think that his ear getting infected more and more frequently contributed to his demise. In the spring of the year that I had to put Gwydion down, 2018, I went to the hotel at which I often do contract massage work. I was doing a couple's massage and took the elevator up to the client's room with a colleague with whom I frequently worked. I asked her how she was doing. She said not so good. She had to put her dog down a couple days prior and was grieving. She told me he'd gotten sick and there was nothing more to be done. She had had him euthanized by a kind vet who made house calls and she knew an animal hospital in Hillsborough that was also a crematorium where she had taken the remains of her beloved pet. A couple days later, I realized that I had been offered all the information needed to take care of Gwydion when the time came. Not even a month had passed when the time did come, and I called my fellow massage therapist, Cheryl. Not only did she share the details of the vet and the animal hospital, but she was also of great moral support. The day came in September during hurricane season. With excrement and urine, Gwydion had ruined a leather chair that an ex-boyfriend had given me, and one of the wooden dining chairs my father had brought from Germany in the 1960s. That was it. I put Gwydion on the porch. I could no longer trust him in the house. I made him comfortable with food, water, litter box, and bedding. It turned out that it was the weekend of Tropical Storm Florence. I called the vet just as the weather was coming in. He told me he was hunkered down for the storm in another county for the weekend and would not be available until Tuesday of the following week. I made an appointment for Tuesday and prepared my property for the approaching tropical storm. Florence brought a lot of rain, but as far as gale force winds, I lived through Andrew in Miami. It was pretty tame. What the storm gave Gwydion and I was three solid days time enough together to prepare him for his journey across the Great Divide. First, I told him what was going to happen. He would leave his body, encounter a bridge, the Rainbow Bridge. He was to walk across the bridge, not stopping until he reached the end. He would know the end because Jesus would be there waiting for him. Jesus would then take him to where he was supposed to go, in the heavenly realm. I had started watching Sid Roth's show on YouTube, It's Supernatural, in the spring of 2017. 
Sid is a Messianic Jew and investigative reporter who has, since the early 80s, explored the world of spirit and the supernatural of God from a biblical perspective. All the topics he presented on his show, the gifts of the spirit, prophecy, healing, miracles, and prayer, were all topics I had explored my whole adult life, although not from within the context of the Orthodox Church. I did object to his insisting that if those topics were explored outside the purview of strict Christianity, then they necessarily were demonic. To be sure, there is a demonic realm. Satan and his minions hastening the downfall of believers with slavery, suicide, torture, murder, crime, and addiction. But to say that all who explored the world of spirit are on Lucifer's team is simply not accurate and falsely accuses otherwise perfectly good people of being in league with the devil. Still, I spent a lot of time listening to the various guests that appeared on Sid's show. Sid had many ministers, teachers, prophets, healers, musicians on his show presenting the topics they specialized in. In the spring before the fall that Gwydion died, Sid had on his show a series of pastors who emphasized the importance of praying in tongues to establish one in a rich, productive prayer life. I'd been born again at the age of 16 and had received the gift of tongues. So even though it had been years and years since I'd exercised this gift, I commenced again effortlessly, making praying in tongues to this day a permanent part of my prayer life. Praying in tongues is different from petition prayer because the person, in this case me, doing the praying, really doesn't know what they're saying but what they're saying communicates directly with the Holy Spirit and builds a dynamic relationship with God. Even though the rains were pretty constant and the air was heavy with moisture, the porch during the storm named Florence was still secure. So I continued to prepare my cat for his trip to the other side of life by going out to the porch to comfort him and tend to him. It was then that I started praying in tongues while laying on the porch floor next to Gwydion. What came out of that praying was a rhyming rhythmic chant. My intuitive sense was that the song would lead his spirit across the chasm on the rainbow bridge, guiding him and inspiring him to keep on going, homeward bound, and not to stop until he got there. By the end of the weekend, the song that has come to be known as Ayawa Ye was set, and I recorded it. I recorded it because I wasn't sure I could contain my tears and keep on singing it while Gwydion got his lethal injection. The doctor came in Tuesday, as scheduled, a big, calm, gentle man. He gave Gwydion his first injection on the porch. I played the recording as he lost consciousness. We had prepared a table with a plastic bag as a sheet and a towel on top of which we'd give the shot that would stop his heart. Once he was limp, I picked him up and brought him to the table. The deed was done in a couple of minutes. My dear friend Susan drove me and Gwydion's body to the crematorium, and that was the end of it. Gwydion had a great life. He contributed to mine as a friend, healer, and companion. His life was a wonderful gift. The circumstance of his final days also brought a great gift, the song of Yahweh Yi. May it bless your life as it did Gwydion's and mine. Ah, Yahweh Yi, Yahweh Yi.